such a good movie, don't you think? My favorite part was when he escaped from his bedroom using the rope ladder that he made out of his bed sheets. It was so cool. Oh, come on, dude. That was not realistic. There's no way those bed sheets would have held his weight. They would have broken. Really? You want to bet on it? Yeah, I do. Wait, how would we test that out exactly? Hey, Diane. What is it? Do you want to hear a joke? Oh, I would love to. What did one quantum physicist say to the other quantum physicist he wanted to fight? What did he say? Let me add him. Ooh, that's a nice one. <laughs> oh. Hey, Dr. Fango and Dr. Ryan. Hey, guys. So we were wondering if you would be able to help us with our physics experiment. So we were trying to test the feasibility of escaping out of a window using bed sheets. At first, we were thinking, oh, let's just jump out of a window holding onto a bed sheet. But we thought that might be a titch dangerous. So we were wondering if you had any suggestions on how to make this experiment more scientific and safer. I think you need to test the controls first. Perhaps set up a pulley system with a rope applied to a force meter and see a standard deviation of how much force is applied for dynamic load of a person climbing a rope. Okay, but that, how would that measure the total force acting on the rope? Well, actually, the total force of the climber on the rope is a combination of the gravity affecting the climber and the force of the climber pulling on the rope to support themselves. We'll measure this using a force platform set up with counterweights. By Helmholtz's law of conservation of force, you should be able to measure a standard deviation or standard change per dynamic load of the person climbing or descending the rope. This will record the difference in the force acting upon the counterweight upon the force platform. Whatever the difference in the force before and after this dynamic load, we will be able to measure that against the force needed to perhaps climb a fitted bed sheet or break the fitted bed sheet. I have an idea for the setup of the experiments. Let's go draw it out for him on the board. To the lab. In the case of a person climbing down a rope, the force that the person exerts on the rope is known as the impact force, and it's given by the equation F max equals mg plus the square root of mg squared plus 2mghk, m being the mass of the climber, g being the acceleration due to gravity, h being the fall height, which in our case is the difference between the person's hands as they pull themselves down, and k being the spring constant of the rope, like how much elasticity it has. We're using the model of the rope as an undampened harmonic oscillator, which is why we're using K. It's similar to a spring. So in order to measure the fall height, that would just be like the difference between the knots in the rope. Yes. Yo. Yo. Now there are two different kinds of rope in everyday use. You have a static rope, used for probably tying one's shoes, or a dynamic rope for rock climbing. The difference being the length of the ropes as well as their general makeup. Now all ropes are pretty much braided, but a dynamic rope contains maybe three or four different ropes that are then braided together. Because when a dramatic tension event, as in someone ascending or descending a rope, their acceleration and their mass acting upon it, the rope must assume this force. And doing so, a dynamic rope will elongate and the braid will, the braid will you know, tighten. A static rope will most likely snap due to its shorter length and its lack of the ability to elongate and absorb the force over time. This all really has to do with momentum and the falling of a person or decelerating a person up the rope. We believe that you should have three different experiments. Two in the lab, having a control with like a climber's rope, and then another control with your actual bed sheets, and then in the field experience with the bed sheets knotted together. Our control test is gonna be two pulleys holding the rope, the rope is going to have a counterweight on top of a force platform, and then the climber will be on the other side. As the climber moves up and down the rope, it's going to exert a force, which will lessen the force of the counterweight on the force platform. So the change in force is what we're looking for, because that's the force that's being exerted on the rope by the climber. Now that you have the control, or you know the standard change in force, you can use it with the knotted bed sheets to see if they will work. And if all proves well, I'd advise you to try it out in the field, but if not, maybe troubleshoot, braid the bed sheets together, or perhaps make the knots closer together. Hey, so I met up with Dr. Fangboner, and she was telling me about how uh, the impact force will affect the rope. Now, what did Professor Ryan teach you? Uh, he was telling me all about dynamic versus static ropes, and about how we can use this to help our experiment. Okay, cool. So, yeah, yeah, let's compare notes a little bit more. Okay.
Looking at the graph of force over time, you can see the initial change in force when the two group members step onto the force platform for counterweight, and then the change in force when the climber gets on the rope. When the climber starts moving down the rope, the force they exert on their side pulls some of the counterweight off the force platform, resulting in a lower reading. The difference between the higher level of the graph and the final level of the graph is the force that the climber is exerting on the rope, a combination of their gravitational force and their impact force. The fluctuations in the graph are the result of the changing impact force as the climber moves himself down the rope. The impact force can be measured by subtracting the climber's weight, or their gravitational force, from the total change in force as measured by the force platform. In this trial, the force of the counterweight alone is around 1300 newtons, and then after the climber gets on the rope, the force is measured at around 750 newtons. This means that the total force of the climber is about 550 newtons. The climber in this trial weighed around 950 newtons, which is more than the total force, showing that our data is flawed. This may be a result of the setup because we did not account for the friction of the pulleys, which could have lowered the force measured by the force platform. See, I knew that it would work. Look what I told you. No, you're right. I admit it. Just imagine what we can do with these findings. Want to rob a rich dude's house? I'm in. And we already have bed sheets. Man, who would know physics would turn us into felons? We ran into a few problems while testing our experiment, mainly with the apparatus. Testing the impact force of a person climbing down a rope turned out to be quite difficult to do accurately and safely. The rope test with the force platform could have been improved with a non-human counterweight, a taller area to climb, and more trials. In the future, we could have tried different knots for the sheets, braiding them, and looking at them with different thread counts. Overall, we were able to show that bed sheets tied together would support an average human climbing with down a small distance Thus myth confirmed. So if you ever find yourself stuck on a second floor in a fire or something, bed sheets might just save your life. Hey, Dr. Fangborn, I got that. Hi. Hey, so we were wondering.